Today we're going to talk about one last non-parametric test, also for paired data, but a little bit more powerful, called the Wilcoxon signed rank test. And it combines attributes of two testing philosophies. The sign test is evaluating the signs of the differences. And the t-test evaluates the magnitude of the differences. This is again a test for paired data. It does require a symmetric distribution for y1 minus y2 though. And it compares non-parametric differences. So not just comparing means. So this is comparing data with some sort of ranking, either cardinal or ordinal. An example would be rank something like, say, course evaluations on a scale from 1 to 5. But the numbers 1 through 5 have no absolute meaning, only a relative meaning that 5 is bigger than 4, is bigger than 3, bigger than 2, bigger than 1. So we're going to move on to an example. And this example is going to be similar to the one that we did for the sign test. Here again, a company is going to test the effectiveness of a newly developed sunscreen formula. And they're going to perform an experiment with 12 subjects, not 25 like the sign test. And each of them has the old formula of sunscreen applied to the left arm and the new formula of sunscreen applied to the right arm. And then for each one, the, each person is exposed to one hour of sun and the degree of redness on a scale from zero to 10 on each arm is compared. So with the sign test, we just looked if the left arm was more red than the right arm or vice versa. But here we're going to assign a numerical score between zero and 10 to determine the degree of redness on each arm. Now, that numerical scale from 0 to 10 is not a measurement, not like when we're measuring heights and weights and things like that. It is just a numerical scale that we're assigning to the redness. And so the numbers 0 through 10 don't have any meaning other than the fact that 10 is more red than 9, is more red than 8, et cetera, et cetera. The first thing that we will have to do in order to, to apply the Wilcoxon sign rank test is to calculate the differences in the scales between the left arm and the right arm. So for the first subject, we saw that the left arm had a redness score of 5, and the right arm had a redness score of 2, and so the difference was 3. The second subject, the left arm, had a redness of 3, and the right arm had a redness of 5, so the difference is negative 2. And then we can keep computing the differences all the way down. Now we're going to want to look at the absolute values of these differences to see how big they are. So here I'm going to take the absolute value of each one of the differences. And then we're going to look at these differences and we're going to rank them from 1 to 12. 12 being the largest difference and 1 being the smallest difference. So we notice that subject 11 has the largest difference of 10, so we give that a rank of 12. Subject 7 has the next largest difference of 9, so we give that a rank of 11. Subject 10 has a rank of 10. Subject four, 
4 has a difference of 7. We're going to rank that 9. Subject 8 is going to have a ranking of 8. Subject 3 is going to have a ranking of 7 because 5 is the next largest number. And then uh, the next largest from 5 is going to be 4. That's going to have a ranking of negative 6. And then the next largest is 3, and we notice that 3 actually appears twice. So the difference of 3 appears here once and here once. So the way that we deal that with that is that we assign the next largest ranking of 5 to one of the 3s, and the next largest ranking of 4 to the next 3. And then we're going to want to average those two rankings of 4 and 5. So we're going to average this number and this number. So the average of 4 and 5 is 4 and a half. Now the next largest difference is going to be 2. You'll see that one of the twos is positive and one of the twos is negative. The rankings for those twos would normally be three and two, but we're going to average them so that we get two and a half for one of the twos and two and a half for the other two. And then finally, the smallest difference is 1, and that gets a ranking of 1. Now, notice that I've put negative signs in front of the rankings for the negative differences. Okay, so here we can see there's a negative sign for subject 2 because there's a negative difference there. There's a negative sign for subject 6 because there's a negative difference there. And there's a negative sign for subject 12 because there's a negative difference there. What's important to realize is that the numbers I've computed in the rightmost column are not the differences, but the rankings of the differences. So you should see all of the numbers represented, starting with 1, 2, but 2 doesn't isn't there because it was a tie, so I have 1, 2 and a half, and 2 and a half. And then because threes were tied, I, the differences of three were tied, then I had four and a half and four and a half. And then finally, I start with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so what are we going to do with these numbers? Well, we've already calculated the differences for each pair. We found the absolute values of the differences. We ranked the absolute values from smallest to largest. We added plus signs and minus signs to the rankings based on the sign of the difference. And now I'm going to compute two numbers. W plus will be the sum of the positive ranks, and W minus will be the sum of the negative ranks. So looking back at our data, our positive ranks were 2 and a half, 4 and a half, 4 and a half, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Our negative ranks were 1, 2 and a half, and 6. So the sum of all the positive ranks were 68 and a half. And the sum of all the negative ranks, which, in which I've removed the negative signs, were 9 and a half. 
So the test statistic, much like the sign test, is going to be the larger of w plus and w minus. In this case, 68 and a half. And then we will need to refer to table 8 in order to figure out the p-value. Here, where the number of differences, the number of subjects that we looked at was 12. So with a test statistic of 68 and a half and a number of subjects of 12, I'm going to go down to our table for the Wilcoxon rank test. Here we are. And I'm going to highlight for a number of differences, number of differences being 12, 12 subjects and the number 68 and a half would appear right here between 65 and 69. And so that tells us that our p-value is somewhere between 0 0.016 and 0 0.042. So let's look at our p-value here. here for WS being 68 and a half and our number of differences being 12, we got that the p-value was between 0 0.16 and 0 0.042. And if we use an alpha of 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. And so notice, by having some sort of scale of redness and looking at the differences of the degrees of redness for this test, with only 12 subjects, we were actually able to get statistical significance. Whereas with the sign test, we were not able to do that with 20 subjects. So let's look at some technical details. First, if the D equals zero for a pair, then we do not use those data points. If there are two differences with the same absolute value, as I said before, we use consecutive ranks for these and then average the two ranks for that sign rank. However, if there are ties, the p-values in table eight are no longer exact. We should uh, summarize our discussion of paired data tests. Uh, we looked at, in chapter eight, the paired t-test, the Wilcoxon sign rank test and the sign test. Uh, if you can do a paired T test, uh, that is the best situation if you have a normal distribution uh, and you're looking at the difference in means, uh, then this is the highest powered test. Uh, if you don't have a normal distribution, but you do have a symmetric distribution and you have either cardinal data or ranked ordinal data, then uh, the Wilcoxon sign rank test is uh, a medium power test that you can use. If you have no idea about the distribution uh, and it's completely free, uh, then, uh, and you can't rank the ordinal data, then the sign test, which is the lowest powered test, is the best test to use.